Well, hi there, boys and girls. This is Phil Simborg from the Backgammon Learning Center, and I have with me, as you can see, the great Steve Sachs, one of the top players in the world, and we're both uh, teachers with the Backgammon Learning Center, www.backgammonlearningcenter.com. 25 teachers in 12 languages, giving lessons online and live all over the world. Well, because of the uh, uh, situation that we're in health-wise. I've had lots of time to play backgammon. And yesterday, I had the pleasure of playing a friend of mine a bunch of money games. And uh, as I tell my students to do, I went through all the matches afterwards because we played on extreme gammon. And I picked out my mistakes and I went through them. And uh, the ones that I could easily understand uh, where I, why I got them wrong, I discarded them. And the rest I put into a file called my study file. Steve has never seen these uh, problems that I'm about to show you. There are eight problems that I found challenging and I want to really find out from Steve first of all how he would play it over the board. Let's find out how good he really is and if he gets them right. And he's Again, he's never seen these before. If he misses one or two, that's okay. I, uh, but I, I expect him to do pretty well and then I want him to explain to me the logic behind the right play. So this would be a good uh, lesson for all of us. So let's just get right in. They're all checker plays with I think one cube action problem. And these, again, these all happened to me yesterday in money games, so they're all money games. I'm blue in every case, and I'm bearing off to the right. And this is a pretty simple, common situation where blue has a 6-5 to play. So, Steve, take it away. Tell me what you think you would uh, do and why. Okay, well, obviously there's only two choices. You can bring two down, or you can slot the bar and you can hit. Um... Bringing two down is best structurally, but the problem is, is that uh, he's got ones, he or she, whatever, I don't know. Um, white has uh, ones, threes, and fives to make the five point, and sixes to escape. So there's a little bit too much diversification. Um, also, if you hit loose, I mean, it's not that pleasant to put a checker on your ace point, but uh, you do give them four numbers to dance on. And if they do hit you, um, it's possible you come in with a six and make your bar point. So as much as I really don't like putting a checker on the ace point, I'm going to do it this time to play 13, 7, 6, 1, uh, just because, because uh, you know, because of all those reasons. Okay, I just said. you completely ruled out a third possibility of just playing 13 to 2, right? Why? I, I mean, it's possible that's right. I, I, I can't. I mean, I'd be super surprised if that was the right play. Why did you rule that one out immediately, though? Okay, because it's not constructive and it's just about as risky. I mean, if you're if you're slotting 13 to 2, you're leaving 11 shots, you're starting a weak point, you're not uh, unstacking your midpoint, you're not taking advantage of uh, the benefits of... Uh, I but, got you. Uh, you have just about as many liabilities, but not oh, nearly I, the... I ruled it out, too. I just was curious to know how... I think some people might have considered that play. As long as you're going to leave a blot, you may as well take away half his roll and put him up on the bar. And I'm hoping so. You're going to see that Steve is right. I made the wrong play and brought two down. And I think Steve hit the nail on the head, if I can help a little bit here. If you don't hit here, you're just giving your opponent so many good things he can do. And one of the things you do when you make a hypothesis is test it. And I did test it. Let's pretend he didn't have this builder here and put this here. Now the plays become very, very close because there's a lot less that white can do to hurt you. As a matter of fact, you know, it probably has to be rolled out, but it's within 1%. So the fact that this builder is here shows you that Steve was thinking the right thing. You're, you're taking away uh, all the roles that, that this checker helps him for, the 5-1 and the 6-2, making points inside, and, and uh, uh, just too many good, good roles you're taking away by hitting. And again, I didn't hit. This stays in my study file until I've completely absorbed it. Then I'll take it out, and my study file will keep growing. Believe me, I'll have more tomorrow to put in. But Steve, you're one for one. Anything else to add about this position? Yeah, one thing that I didn't mention uh, with, I mean, I sort of mentioned it as far as diversification is concerned, but the, the back checker does not move on threes and fives, but yet threes and fives are perfectly played uh, for white uh, going forward. So, you know, that's just another tangent of the diversification that I'm talking about, but it's specific to the structure of the position and that threes and fives are blocked on mm -hmm. one side of the board and then you play perfectly on the other side of the board. So you want to take those 
good numbers away from your wow. opponent. Okay, good point. Let's go on to the next uh, problem. We've got eight of them. Oops, I lost it. It's my study file. Here it is. Number two. Okay, this is a cube action problem. I'm blue, I'm on roll. Obviously, we're not worried about whether what white should do here because I'm the one that made a mistake. I either doubled when I shouldn't or I didn't double when I should. So, Steve, money game, what do you think is right here? Okay, so let's see. Piff's position and threats. We got 67... 70, 77, 107, 37, 134 for blue, I believe. Most of us just cheat and look at the numbers on the screen. Oh, oh <laughs> I did. You know what? I didn't see them. They were all the way on yeah, the corner. Yeah, but Steve okay, is so Steve's one of the fastest counters in the world, so he could afford to do that. Okay. Um, all right. So a little bit of a race lead for uh, blue, and uh, position. I mean, it's it's two back versus three back, but one of them is on the bar, so that probably is about equivalent, uh, but what you're really looking at uh, as far as benefits for doubling are the threats, because you have uh, combinations of threes, fours, and fives, the point on the uh, ace point, you have combinations of ones, twos, threes, and fives, which is pretty similar to make the three point, for some fours and sixes, uh, make the deuce point or run out. Uh, I can't imagine this not being a double. Uh, but I wouldn't pass. I mean, it's three back and you've got great structure. The only thing that has me tempted to pass this cube is that extra blot out on the 15 point, but it's still pretty far to reach. Um, you know, you might, it might be quite a few shakes before that, that checker is uh, sent up to the bar. Uh, but I, it just it looks like your standard double take to me. Okay, so uh, you're very confident it's a double. And that's the real question. And, and my mistake was I did not double this. I didn't see it as that many market losers. The way I evaluate these positions is I ask my, I use Wilsey's law first. I always do that. And I ask myself if he's taking, my answer was yes. And I asked myself what market losers I have. And you certainly came up with a lot of them because you're also, you're really looking at a blitzing in this position. And I should have thought more about it being a blitzing position with 12 checkers in the zone. And I really wasn't thinking that much that I was going to have a real blitz here. And I wasn't thrilled about attacking the ace point, but I guess that's that's the game plan. You roll a 5-3 or a 4-3, you make the ace point here, don't you? Yeah, and also, you, it doesn't appear that you have any bad numbers. So when you're counting market losers, sometimes you have to subtract. Doing a lecture. <laughs> Yeah, you have to subtract the bad numbers. Let's look at let's look at uh, uh, dice distribution, which is a wonderful feature of extreme gammon, and it tells me that I was wrong about these market losers. I mean, these clearly uh, four, 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 three, five, four. All these point on him and make the ace point, which is really what I wasn't really thinking about blitzing as I as I been, should have. I didn't put much concentration on that. And Steve pointed out you have no bad rolls. Your worst rolls are not that bad. You're still a pretty big favorite if you roll your very worst roll. Uh, so this proves Steve's point. And of course, you can't pull up dice distribution while you're playing, but it's a great thing to look at afterwards to see what you missed. This tells me what I missed, and Steve saw it right away. Anything else about this position you want to point out? Well, yeah, like I was saying, um, when you're doing uh, counting market losers or potential market losers, you have to subtract your anti-jokers from your jokers. So if you had one or two jokers and maybe like uh, anti-jokers, but maybe like eight jokers, then the net would be like six. So you might not want to double it unless it was a really volatile mm -hmm. position. But uh, here, I mean, you have different, like it, it says your very worst roll is six, two, and that can make your two points. So you have no bad numbers. This just, just depends on how good the number is. Yeah, I just, I just didn't see the double here with those three checkers back and didn't really realize the, the strong potential of blitzing here. That's that's why I have to study this. That's why I'm not as good as Steve Sachs. Let's go on. You're two for two, Steve. Very good. Exactly right. what I expected, by the way. Doesn't surprise me any. Okay, number three. This is a checker play problem. Blue to play six, two. Cube has been turned. White has the cube. Um... 
I don't really like hitting past the anchor in general, uh, unless it's very, very late in the game, in which case you you know you want to stop your opponent from anchoring up. Uh, so you're saying you don't like hitting the ace point here with the six? No. So I, I think what I want to do is I want to escape. The question is which checker do I want to escape with? Do I want to escape with uh, the back checker or the front checker? Um, it almost doesn't matter. You hit the nail on the head, and they're very, very close. So it's not worth it's not worth going into a lot of detail. I hit off the ace. I thought I was blitzing here, and I th I was afraid of him making the ace point. But after I study it, I see even if he makes the ace point, he's got a horribly timed one three back game. I shouldn't be that much afraid of it. But you're right. It's you you need to run with one of those two checkers. It's slightly better to run from the front. Why is that? Um, because if uh. You're 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 not under much pressure to get the back check around. You have a good chance to prime your opponent in. Um, but what you want to avoid is, you know, a constructive counterattack. So if your opponent comes in off the bar and hits you on their ace point, that's very unproductive. Whereas if they hit, come in and hit you off the deuce point and they can make their deuce point, then they only have double gap, as opposed to creating a triple gap. So. Uh, I mean, there is a slight temptation of moving the back checker out and leaving the checker on the 23 just because you're confronting the uh, stripped eight point. But there's not really, I mean, unless they roll double twos, that's not going to be relevant. And they can always make their three point with double twos. So I would, just, even, the, even the slightest bit, just take that uh, more constructive uh, counterattack yeah. away from them. Of course, we'd be talking about an entirely different position if he had more timing. But if he had more timing, then maybe I would have a reason to hit him off the ace point. Sometimes you would do that, wouldn't you? You keep him from having a good, making a good back game. Well, yeah. I mean, you could, uh, if if they had plenty of timing, then you, you could do that. Hope to get that checker hit and recirculated, as maybe one more checker. I mean, the more checkers you have on top of your prime, the more you have reason to want to hit loose and to hopefully get that checker recirculated. Here, you only have the one checker on top of the prime. The rest of them are, you know, will be capable of making the prime, you know, the checker that you just escaped, uh -huh. plus you have fours and fives. So what Steve game. is saying is this checker right here isn't a real productive checker, but if you had several of them there, you might want to do some recirculation to hurt his timing, but just one isn't going to hurt you much. All right, Steve, you're three for three. Let's move on. And by the way, if you're watching this, you can pause the video any time if you want to take more time to figure out your own play before you hear Steve's answer. Okay, blue. To, here's after I made the wrong play and hit, and now blue has a four-two to play. Hey, well, this is uh, the most difficult one so far, I believe. I mean, it's between moving the back trick, uh, 23 21 and 12 8, or just making the ace point. So, uh, if you make the ace point, it seems like you may have a little bit of difficulty in getting your back checkers out. This is what uh, it would look like. Uh huh. So. I, I think I'm, I, it, gosh, all right, I'll take my chances here. I think I'm going to play uh, 20, I'm going to play 23, 21, and 13, uh, 12, uh, 12, 8. Well, I made the ace point, and he made the right play. And uh, again, uh, your logic is that you're going to make the prime here, and you're not that worried about him making the ace point. If he makes the ace point and hits you, his timing is going to be lousy. And you're worried about crashing and not getting those back checkers out. Yeah, and also if he if he hits you with an ace right away, then you can, you know, you can roll a four or some combination of three and make an advanced anchor. Plus you have fives. Well, the fives are a little bit duplicated because you have fives to make the uh, the prime. You also have fives to escape the back checker. Mm -hmm. Here's but, the here's uh, the biggest fallacy that I learned. I made the ace point thinking that. Uh, 
I would win a lot more gammons. But the truth is you win 2% more gammons and you lose the game 4% more. And uh, I love uh, what Jake Jacobs always used to tell me, you don't win any gammons if you lose the game. So you got to win the game first. And uh, I was getting a little too gammon happy here. And by the way, how many times have you gone for the closeout and it succeeded and then crashed because you didn't get those back checkers out. It's not that uncommon that you don't roll the right numbers to get these guys moving. So Steve uh, prevented that, made the right play. Again, a little bit more study and I can remove this from my study file. Let's move on. Steve, you're 100%. Four for four. Here's number five. Blue to play 4-1. Oh, well. So if you leave the shot now, that's 14, 18 numbers. So half the time you're getting hit. But most of the time, when you do get hit, you're going to have a deuce to hit back with unless your opponent rolls double threes. If you don't leave the shot now, they might cover. Uh, and then if you leave a shot... You have a worse board, and um, I'm sorry, you have a worse board, and they might have a better board. So that's a lot of numbers to leave. So would I dare? I mean, they got a pretty strong position there, even if even if you don't hit them, because if you play ten to five, and they hit you, and you come in with a one five, you crack in your board. I, so there's I, really I, only two. I, I there's really only two plays, though. Now. There's only two plays. There's ten to five or, or clear the six point, right? Yeah, I think I'll leave the shot now. I, I don't know. Okay. Just because you know, I mean, you're you you don't have a lot of rolls that uh, ensuing rolls that that are risk free. You have like five four plus oh is it five no six five plus some doubles work. But well, let's time, let's look at the answer before you go on because you got this one wrong, just like I did, and I thought okay. it was really, really right. I really thought it would be very ugly not to leave the shot. We're obviously wrong. Of course, this is not the highest rollout, which I'll do a plus plus, which is the highest evaluation we can get before a rollout. But I think it's pretty pretty right to assume that XG's got this one right, and both I'm both Steve and I missed this one. So now that you see the right answer and this is the right play to leave it like this, is the logic that maybe you won't leave a shot next time or maybe you'll leave fewer shots next time? Um, well, the logic would be is that even if you leave a shot, you know, the next time or the time after that, your opponent may not have improved their position at all because they only have threes to cover. If they had a position where they had like threes, fours, and fives to cover, then maybe it might be right to leave the shot now because uh but because they only have 14 numbers to cover then you cannot leave the shot now and i mean 18 numbers is a lot a lot of shots to leave you know which um is is interesting because it's not like it's a blunder to leave the, the shot now but it is a mistake uh so a blunder by the way is if it was 0.08 according to uh, our current definition of a blunder, but anything, any, this is a, this is a serious enough mistake to where we should understand the reason behind it. So how do we change this position to, uh, to make it right? Uh, you give them more covers with this. No, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's, let's take a look at, we give them more covers. That. Nope. Now it's monstrous. Well, because he has to break because he, he has to go with a six or. Oh, well, how about, how about, uh, well, no, um, more covers, we can give them more covers like this. Nope, it's still going to be right every time. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you can construct... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so the, the decision to pay now or pay later, a lot of times, I guess the summation of this is, if you're paying so much now, maybe paying later won't be any worse or just as bad, so delay the pain. I guess that's the the best logic for this. 
but I, I'm going to have to work on this a little bit longer too. But at least I feel vindicated that one of the best players in the world missed it too. So I feel a little bit better. And now we prove to our to our uh, viewers that we're being honest that you you haven't seen these positions in advance. Okay, no, nothing to be embarrassed about missing one out of eight so far. Just don't miss the next three. All right. <laughs> Okay, red, to, blue to play double two. Hmm. Well, if you leave the checker there, that's 15, five, three, and six, two, that's 19, and six, five is 21 numbers. Or you can it, move it forward and leave, is that 23 numbers? All right, let me, let me stop you for one second. The one thing we always teach, and Steve teaches this better than anybody, if there's a part of the play that you know is forced, make that first. We know we're hitting this guy. You know that you can't not hit this checker. So you start with that, and that's what Steve did, but he did it in his head. And now you have a question of where to play the other two. So always start with the part you know of, and obviously you have two choices, and that's what Steve is looking at. Do you go forward with this two? You're going to lift. You know that. You know you. By the way, this is number three. You should do this because you know you're not going to leave that shot. Now the only question is where's the last one? So let's go from here. Well, uh, I guess we're just going to count the numbers. So if we move forward, then uh, we hit with uh, three, two, five, two, six, two. That's six numbers, double sixes, and. Three five 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 and six five. That's another five numbers. Is twelve numbers, and also double threes. So thirteen numbers. Thirteen numbers hit this way. Uh, if we stay back, how many numbers is this? This is. It looks like it's just six numbers. Uh, so. But you're that much closer to home. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, it's difficult. Uh, so 13 numbers, and you're closer to home, but you're not. You're still not home free. Or six numbers, and you're also got some distance to travel. I guess I would leave the fewer shots, but uh, quite often that's wrong. But I'll, I'll go with leaving fewer shots. Okay, let me put it back to the original. And fewer shots, What well, I think what Steve was talking about is you, you have two problems here. One is you don't want to get hit. And the second one is if you don't get hit, you want to bring it home. And by bringing it closer, you're much more likely to bring it home and get it in, and get him past the, the, uh, the defense, to get him past white by bringing it closer. But the penalty is you're leaving more shots. And Steve's saying you're leaving too many more shots to do that. And I don't think this checker was off, was it? I don't think he had any checkers off. Yeah, maybe it was. Doesn't matter. The point is that Steve's right again, and I got it wrong. I thought it was worth leaving more shots. I did the, I counted the shots correctly, and uh, uh, I thought it was better to bring it closer. It's not a huge mistake, but I didn't really understand. Uh, it looked so hard to bring this checker home from here that I thought it was right to give them more shots. So I guess at some point, you would leave you would leave one more shot maybe to bring it closer maybe two it's just hard to say where the cutoff is it depends on the on the yeah. position this is such an odd position that uh, I mean with, with crunching the board I you know I, I guess you you could probably say like two more shots but uh, but in your mind you instantly felt that 13 versus six is is just way too much it's more it's more than twice as much yeah yeah okay. You're batting a thousand except for that one. You got two more. Very good. At least I was thinking about the right variables. I just read it wrong. Okay. Blue to play six four. Uh hmm. Well, I mean, I, I, 
What plays you are you have, thinking of? I think there's only two plays, correct? Tell me if you no, agree. You, you can play uh, 21 to 11, or you can play 13 to 3. And if you play 21-11, then you're going to get a double shot on some of the smaller numbers. Um, but you're also going to get hit on sevens and nines, and that's uh, 11 numbers. Plus, when he gets past you, he's in pretty good shape. Uh, if you play, I mean, you're not likely to get gammon, but you could get gammon. If you play 13-3, uh, to three, then, you know, the average roll is an eight. And then you're going to be, uh, this is a tough play. You're going to be forced out, so you're going to have one shot to probably hit a fly shot to hit him. I I actually think, I don't think you get gammoned enough to, I think I actually would move the back checker forward. I would move 21-11. So, I mean, the, the chance of him picking up both checkers and gamming you is pretty small, and you really gain a lot when he rolls, like, a small number. And because of the two checkers on the six point, you know, just a little bit of tempo and slowing him down just a little bit might win you the game. So I actually would play 21-11 here. Okay, here again, Steve made the same mistake I made. It's not uh -huh. huge. It's only a 4% error, so don't feel so bad. It's, you're still gonna play under three PR, which is what you've been playing lately. I've been watching your PRs and you're playing under three a lot. Uh, uh -huh. But I think you've already given the reason for the other it's simply because you get hit less and he doesn't get completely past you. If he rolls higher than a nine here, you'll never see another shot. And if he rolls a seven or a nine and he hits you, you're probably dead. And at least with the other play, you might get a fly shot. But, you know, think about it. In this game, if you play th here, even if you don't hit a shot, you can still win from here by not getting hit. All you need is one double or one joker, which is, by the way, what happened. I did win the game making the other play uh, just by... Rolling some doubles. He only had three checkers on. Well, another mistake that I made in, in, in figuring that position, I figured that if he rolled a small number, he would move forward and you get a double shot. But, of course, that's not true. He can just break a six point, you know? So he doesn't even have to leave a shot on his smaller numbers. Ah. Three, one, three, two, four, two. All right. Do, so what Steve is saying is, is, is if he points. rolled a three, one, or a four, two, he, he doesn't have to give you shots, direct shots at all. He can, he's well, got the checkers on the 11 point, uh, the blue. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Same thing, anyway. So, yeah, that was really uh, ill conceived. So, so I got you. All right. So, you're all, you are got two misses. That's still not bad. Let's do one more. You're still hitting a great percentage. And by the way, the two you missed, one was a 2.4% error, and the other was 4%. So, we're not talking right. about, uh, we're not talking, we're talking about the kind of plays that Mochi misses all the time, too. Okay. Okay. Six four from here. Okay. Well, I would just run. Okay. The other play obviously is to make the two point. Yeah. You're right again. I made the two point. Why is running? I thought I'm outboarded. Well, He's got three points in his board. I don't want to get into a hitting battle, and it's much better to run. Why? Well, because he's like just about only 50% to hit you. Let's see, all deuces plus five, four, and six, three. So he's got 15 numbers to hit you and send you back. But, you know, you're coming back from where you were originally. So unless you dance 25% of the time, you're gonna be no worse off. And you might even roll a five, four, or a three, two and make an anchor, as well as any ace that can re-anchor. Uh, but this way you have a chance, you know, with the race lead of, uh, escaping the back checker and the or one of the back checkers and just playing um you know escape game so let's let's swing the play the other way let's see if we can i think a checker here would probably make you make the two point wouldn't you maybe let's see hey i'm right by a monstrous amount just having this extra builder and being down that much more in the race is a huge so all the things that steve was talking about where we're sort of proving when you move checkers around what if we put him here? Probably still right to make the two point. Yep. So it's about the race and it's about ammunition to attack. Those two things, Steve nailed it. Uh, I, those of you watching, I hope you nailed most of them too. I'm not embarrassed that I missed any of these because I think I'm human and I'm just not that good, but I'm gonna get them all right. Uh, thank you, Steve Sachs, he lives in LA. 
Uh, you can go to beckemmonlearningcenter.com and select from about 25 teachers. Steve is certainly one of the best in the world as a teacher and a player. And uh, I've watched his videos. I've watched him uh, uh, an analyze matches. He does it great. And uh, by the way, I teach a lot of intermediate players. And as soon as they uh, got all the basics from me, I strongly recommend they move on to Steve Sachs. There's a few others that are very good as well, but he's one of my real strong picks. Uh, everybody stay healthy, stay well. Steve, thank you so much. Thank you, you, Phil. You made me proud of you. you nothing to be ashamed of here with a 2.4 and a 4.0 error, and those were tough ones. So we'll see you soon. My pleasure. Let me sign off here.